Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation where we are going to talk about how to create our own version of a frequency modulation transmitter for FPGA. We'll be using a Python package called Amaranth. During this presentation, we will first look at how FM modulation works and then we'll see an implementation for Amaranth. So first things first, FM modulation. How does it work? A frequency modulation signal is a radio signal that is carrying information through the variation of its frequency. So here you have the radio signal with a quite high frequency. Here you have the information that is to be carried by the radio signal. And here is the modulated signal. When the baseband signal value is high, you see that the frequency of the signal we are sending through the radio is much higher than the frequency you have when you reach the lower part of the sinusoids for your baseband signal. Generally, you will still have a frequency of output that is similar to the original frequency of your carrier signal. So how are we going to implement this with Amarant? Well, we will make use of, a, of an Amarant module we coded earlier called uh, NCO for Numerically Controlled Oscillator. If you haven't seen the video yet, you may be interested into how to do it. Otherwise, let's get to the point. So, you have an information, for example, a frequency. This frequency, uh, if you want to recreate uh, an A, the music note, then you will need to give an input to your NCO. So you give it 440. And 440 Hz gives us a sinusoid signal, which be the input of an addition operation. And we will add to, to a carrier frequency the value of the NCO. And the, the signal that you get here, in fact, is the same has the same frequency as this one but it's shifted around the carrier frequency and so when you use this as an input for your nco you get a radio signal which frequency is around this around this one but you will see the variations that you have produced from here and those variations of frequency that you have here are in fact the information you had at the beginning. So let's see how to implement this with Amaranth. Let's start by importing the different tools we'll need. So first of all Amaranth, then the simulations, then we'll import a package called NCO and in fact the NCO file is just the one we described in the previous video about how to create a numerically controlled oscillator. This is the exact same program. If you haven't seen the video yet, you may be interested in taking a look at it. So we import this file and we also import base to logarithm and the seal function. So let's write this Amaranth class. We'll call it my radio because we are going to do frequency modulation. So as always, we extend the elaborateable class. We define a constructor. And now let's look at what parameters we would need to create our radio. As shown in this presentation, we will need two submodules called NCO. So we need to know the parameters we will put inside this NCO and inside this NCO. So the first parameter we need in our numerically controlled oscillator is the FPGA clock. Let's just list them all in a comment just above. All right, for our radio, we need to know the FPGA frequency. This doesn't change. The memory size is something we will define separately for each NCO, so we don't need to specify it. However, the maximum input frequency is something we need to know because the maximum input frequency of the first NCO is a parameter that depends on what use you want to make of your instance of my radio. So here we write the max input frequency. We also need to know the excursion, which is 
this parameter and another thing we need to know before we instantiate our MyRadio instance is the carrier frequency and we should be good so let's define the input of our radio it will be a signal with a size equal to signal of log to of max input frequency in order to be able to receive any value that is smaller than max input frequency we define the output of our radio and this output will be a signal over only one bit because as this is a radio we are caring about having a uh, an output that is carrying information through its frequency and not through anything else so we don't care about having different level of amplitude this is not something that we care about so it doesn't matter if our signal is square uh, or if it's a nice sinusoid as long as we are carrying information through the frequency then we need to instantiate both our NCOs so we'll define the first one which will represent the baseband signal this is an NCO so it needs to know the FPGA clock it needs to know the memory size let's just choose an arbitrary number like uh, 1024 we will use as a waveform the function cost 255 that we described in the previous video the minimum input frequency will be 1 the maximum input frequency is the maximum input frequency that is received by the radio here this is the frequent the input frequency represents the information we are putting inside our program and uh, we need to specify the maximum output value so as we are using the function cosine 255 it will be 255 now let's describe the radio band signal which is a new instance of NCO and the parameters we are going to give it is of course the FPGA clock we will define the size of the memory as we intend to create a, a square signal we don't need to to have much information in our memory because we are only going to store two values a 0 and a 1 so it can only have two memory spaces the function we are going to use should be a square signal we'll define the square function just after completing the parameters of this NCO the minimum frequency it should have is the carrier frequency the maximum frequency it should receive is equal to the carrier frequency plus the excursion multiplied by the maximum input frequency and we need to specify the maximum output value so we would like to say 1 but you need to remember that our NCO was programmed to use as output size log base 2 of this value so if we give 1 here the result is 0 and we cannot hold any value within an output size of the 0 so we'll just write 2 to avoid this problem and in the end if you look at the size of the memory that is required for when we put 2 it will be log base 2 of 2 which is 1 and seal of 1 is 1 so it's just fine so let's write this square function it should have the same signature as the previous functions like cosine 255 so the parameters are this one and as we are only trying to say that as long as x is smaller than half the maximum value then it should be 0 otherwise it should be 1 so let's say that we return x greater or equal to max value to x max value divided by 2 and we're done for this now we can go to the elaborate method
we say that a submodule's baseband signal is equal to self dot baseband signal. We say that m dot submodules dot radio band signal is equal to self dot radio band signal. And now we can define the rules which are quite easy. In fact, it's just about connecting our different NCOs together. So it's in within the combinatorial domain. We say that the baseband signal input is equal to the inputs of this module. We say that the radio band signal input is equal to the carrier frequency plus the baseband signal the baseband signal output multiplied by the excursion and finally we connect the output of this module to the output of our radio band signal so in this picture we say that we have an adder in in the in here well, this adder is just is just this plus operation, so no need to write any module. We can now test our module. So let's say that the FPGA clock is eight times forty-eight kilohertz. So 48 kilohertz is kind of a standard in frequency modulation. So that's why we take a multiple of this thing to to set our FPGA clock frequency. We say that the max input frequency will be, for example, 1 kilohertz. Our carrier frequency will be around 100 kilohertz. So times 48 and we'll take an excursion of let's say 4 so what are we going to simulate well for the test procedure we are going to look at what's inside our memories to make sure everything is working well and then we'll s we are going to write a file that we could read with another program to see if our frequency modulation has worked well. Let's just use PyPlot to read what's inside the memories of our different submodules. So here we are going to look at what's inside the memory of of the first NCO, the baseband signal, so we expect to get a sinusoid with values between 0 and 255, which is in a, in a memory of 1024 addresses, and we'll just do the same, but for the radio band signal. Alright, from now on we add the clock, the procedure, and we run the test. We don't need this for the moment. Here we are. We forgot to close a parenthesis. We forgot a comma, fine. And so here we get the nice sinusoid with values between 0 and 255 and over 1000 addresses and the second signal here it looks like an identity function but in fact as we are only using uh, integer values we should only care about the fact that when the value is 0 we get 0 and when the value is 1 we get 1. If we changed the number the, the number of addresses inside the memory, uh, we would get something that looks much more like like 
a square signal but it, it would work exactly the same like for example here let's say that we are going to use 100 addresses if we run it again we get the sinusoid and a nice square signal with addresses between 0 and 100 so it works exactly the same fine so now let's look at the signal that is emitted by your program so we don't need this anymore and for the procedure we are going to write some code we want to save the values we output with our program inside a file so let's open a file it will be a binary file so we give the extension dot bin and we will write inside of it and we will write only bytes the input will be an A the music note so we say A we write that A is equal to 440 Hertz we'll write a B2 which is 493 and so here we, we input an A and let's say that for 0 0.25 seconds we are going to simulate a tick we get the value that is outputted by our program output, and we write this inside the file it will be a one byte value with byte order which is little indian and we're good for this so we will repeat this with a B with an A again and finally with a different value so here we'll say uh, that an input we wish to have like a 20 hertz signal we finished writing this procedure however it may take some time following your the computer you are using uh, it may take some time for you to simulate this so you might like to to keep track of how how far your program has gone so we'll write percentage which will start at zero and we know that we are going to simulate FPGA clock number of different ticks so within within each one of the loops we are going to create we'll just say that um, if I has reached uh, a, a divider of FP FPGA clock divided by a hundred then that means we completed one percent of our program so we'll do this within each loop and let's run this Oh, right. That's because I forgot to put a parenthesis right here. Yeah, sure. Don't know why I wrote this. Just the output. We don't need the max value of the output. So here we need to specify that we yield and so here we go so now that we're done we can use um, a program called new radio there are plenty of tutorials on the subject on the web so if you're interested in this you may look at you may look for some resources on the web 
and uh, I'm not going to explain how everything works here but but just know that we made a demodulation program with here a file source a file source that is our music radio dot bin file we are converting the values from from this file from the character format to float we put it inside a DC blocker to remove harmonics that we don't care about in our signal here is what the signal looks like when we read it here we are translating our signal so that we remove the, um, the carrier signal so that in fact the the center frequency would be 100 kilohertz and not zero so in fact it's just like shifting the signal in the frequency spectrum here uh, the, there is inside this program just a PLL that will output the frequency modulations and so here we can send it to an audio sync to to listen to what we wrote we should listen to to an A then a B an A again and then very low noise So here you have the signal that we demodulated and here is the signal that we emit with our program. We can look at the VCD file we just created. So as always we use a GTK wave. What we get with GTK wave is our bass band signal and our radio band signal. If we look at the top module, you get all the inputs and outputs. So let's just look at the bass band signal. The bass band signal is just an NCO, so we have all the characteristics we showed in the earlier video. It has this thing as output and this thing as input. This input is the things the thing we input inside our my radio module. So it should be at first an A 440 and the output is if we look at it as an analog signal it should be a sinusoid then we can see what is the what are the things we get in the radio signal so there are much less things inside the memory but that's totally normal we said that we only use two values for radio band signal which is zero and one so here you get zero and there you get one the input of it is in fact the th the same thing as the output of the previous of the previous signal except that it is shifted by two, by 100 kilohertz so that's why you need more bits but in the end if we look at this as an analog signal you will see the same movements of the sinusoid And finally the output of it is a square signal so if we zoom enough we see that we only have zeros and one but the frequency of it changes following where we are on the sinusoid signal and as before you see that there are four different four different sinusoid waveforms which dep all depend on on the values we gave in input all right so that's it for this presentation during this presentation you had the occasion to learn how a frequency modulation works 
And then you could see how a numeric you can make use of numerically controlled oscillator to simulate your own sounds and recreate sound and recreate a radio band signal that you can demodulate to listen to what you've coded. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening and see you in another video.